journey through breathtaking landscapes. The world's longest railway line, a legend in the truest sense of the word. But for most people, a trip on the Trans-Siberian Railway means something far more. The fulfillment of a lifelong dream. The most popular Trans-Siberian tourist route runs from Moscow through the heart of Russia and Mongolia to Beijing. Moscow, the cultural and political center point of Russia. A visit to the Kremlin is just one of many high points of a tour through the Russian capital. Golden domes, red stars and glass and steel skyscrapers attest to the multifaceted history of this thriving metropolis. Moscow is without doubt one of the world's most vibrant cities. Guests of the Tsar and Gold Railway stay at a four or five star hotel. Some rooms have a splendid view of St. Basil's Cathedral. Visitors will be treated to the best of Moscow's famed nightlife, a magical experience. Departure from the Russian capital. An 8,000 kilometer journey on the Tsarengol train lies before us. More than 60 onboard personnel will accompany us, including technicians, chefs, travel guides, and even a doctor. The Trans-Siberian adventure begins. The Bolshoi class offers the most comfortable travel experience with modern amenities, including private bathrooms. As the tables are being prepared in the restaurant, passengers explore the exclusive transportation that will be their home for the next few days. Some cars are decorated in a style that evokes memories of the Soviet past. In those days, only the ruling elite traveled in such style. Every class offers a level of comfort and coziness that adds a special flair to this unique and magical trip. The train is nearing Kazan. Along with their meal, passengers are treated to a breathtaking view of Russia's longest river, the Volga. Our route takes us through Tatarstan, one of more than 20 republics that make up the Russian Federation. The mosques along the way are testament to the strong Islamic influence in this region. We've reached our first destination, Kazan, the capital of Tatarstan. Travelers have plenty of time to explore the city.
Kazan's Kremlin is an architectural gem and has been named a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The newly constructed mosque is a special source of pride for the people of Tatarstan. This magnificent house of worship was completed in 2005. It's Russia's second largest mosque, a symbol of peaceful coexistence between the region's Muslim and Orthodox Christian faiths. Because just nearby, visitors will find beautiful Russian Orthodox churches. They are just some of the impressive churches that the travelers will find on their trip through Russia. The journey eastwards resumes. In addition to the idyllic countryside, travelers can take part in onboard lectures, split up into small groups according to their language. Und später entwickelt sich auch dieser Name Wodka, ja. aber das Getränk, das alkoholhafte Getränk darf nur Wodka genannt werden. The Russian travel guide seemed to have a special passion for the national drink, Wodka. But of course words are not enough to convey the true pleasures of this intoxicating pastime. Guests are encouraged to test a variety of vodkas from different regions. The vodka flows and the festivities heat up. Our next stop, Yekaterinburg. There's an ever-growing distance between towns and the countryside is increasingly unspoilt. At 1777 kilometers, our train crosses the Urals, which is the geographic border that separates Europe and Asia. It's a cause for celebration. The train arrives in Yekaterinburg. Russian folk musicians greet the disembarking travelers. And guests are encouraged to take part in the traditional dances, a special way of bridging cultures. There's no need for translators here. Yekaterinburg is renowned as a place of learning and as an industrial centre, but it's perhaps best known for an especially dark chapter in Soviet history. It was here in 1918 that Bolsheviks murdered Tsar Nicholas II and his family. The so-called Church on Blood was built to commemorate the tragic episode. Our train is now travelling through Siberia towards Novosibirsk. Shortly before lunch, the onboard kitchen is a hub of activity. 
The freshest ingredients and a wide variety of gourmet meals make this trip a culinary treat. Of course, Russian specialities make up a large part of the menu. Some 30 onboard personnel operate the train's dining cars, catering to the guests' every wish. The Tsarangold Railway offers the consummate in service and dining pleasure. No other Trans-Siberian line comes close. It's an inviting atmosphere that lends itself to conversation and good times. For many, it's the beginning of meaningful friendships. We push on through the endless forests of the taiga in central Siberia. The heart beats in time with the clickety-clack of the train tracks as the stress and hectic of everyday life slowly fades away. Following our visit to Novosibirsk, we arrive in Irkutsk, the provincial capital of Siberia. It's the sixth day of our trip. The station certainly ranks among the most beautiful on this route, a dazzling feast of bright, fresh color. The Tsarangold's guests spend a night in a hotel on the banks of the mighty Angara River. On the next day, there will be a full program of fascinating sightseeing. A morning trip to the marketplace. Here, visitors find spices from all over Central Asia and also try out another of Russia's most famous specialities, caviar. <laughs> Souvenirs and jewelry are just a few of the items to be bought here. Siberia is rich in semi-precious stones and Yakutsk is famous for its handicrafts. But be careful, you could find yourself caught up in a buying frenzy. One hour outside Irkutsk, an idyllic Siberian village. It's truly a trip back in time. Despite the turbulence and strife in this massive country, these villagers retain and treasure age-old family traditions. Trans-Siberian travelers form small groups to visit local families. <laughs> These Spanish travelers gain up close and personal contact with this remote land and its inhabitants. A father and son have commandeered the kitchen on this day to prepare katlieti, a type of hamburger made of mutton and pork. Meanwhile, the family matriarch Irina serves the first course, another famous Russian speciality, borscht. The guests are treated to a generous portion of local color, cuisine and hospitality. Irina explains how her family survives the treacherous Siberian winters and what kinds of vegetables grow best in this climate. It's an authentic taste of daily life in Russia, a unique experience for our European guests. <laughs> 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 
Lake Baikal, Siberia's holy sea. Many locals believe it possesses magical powers. But from a scientific standpoint, it's the world's oldest and deepest lake and the largest single source of fresh water on Earth. More than 300 streams and rivers feed into Lake Baikal. Many of the villages along its banks can only be reached by boat. One Siberian legend has it that those who visit this region leave their souls here. Guests of the Tsarngold capture some of this magic with a boat ride on Lake Baikal. They can also take a stroll through the village of Listvyanka and visit a fish market. Omul is a local speciality and vital to the local economy. It's a fish found only in Lake Baikal. Freshly smoked, a gourmet's delight. The Tsarangold is waiting on the banks of the lake. And today, the onboard staff are paying special attention to the windows. That's because one of the most beautiful stretches is about to begin. The ride along the magnificent Lake Baikal. The passengers return to their train after a night in Irkutsk and the boat ride. This stretch of railway has been off limits to normal train services for years, but the Tsarangold Express has special permission to pass through this captivating region. Tunnels, bridges and viaducts make this leg of the journey the non plus ultra for train aficionados. Passengers even have the opportunity to spend time up front in the locomotive. It's an unforgettable experience for the Tsar and Gold's guests experiencing Lake Baikal in a unique way. Our next stop, the village of Polovinaya. It's one of the most beautiful spots on Lake Baikal, a fairy tale countryside. Here, the guests take part in a traditional Russian picnic with musical accompaniment. Chashlik skewers sizzle on the barbecue as the passengers enjoy an evening surrounded by natural beauty. Every view is picture postcard. 
It's a joyous and informal occasion. The Lake Baikal picnic is another high point of this journey. By now, the guests have learnt a thing or two about vodka, and on this evening, it flows freely. In the early morning, the Tsarn Gold resumes its eastward trek. <laughs> the route crosses through the Republic of Buryatia, on the way to Ulan Ude. It's a land of mountains and deep river valleys. After 5,640 kilometers, our train has reached its last stop in Russia, Ulan Ude, the regional capital of Buryatia. The Mongolian influence is easy to identify in this city of 340,000 people. Here too, passengers have the opportunity to walk through the streets. Among the tourist attractions, the Lenin Monument, purported to be the largest bust of the communist revolutionary. These guests had the good fortune to be on hand for a dress rehearsal of the impressive National Opera. O sole mio, in the heart of Asia, a strange yet captivating meeting of cultures. The Tsarangold train crosses into Mongolia. Our next destination is Ulaanbaatar. A diesel locomotive now pulls the train. Photographers have plenty to keep them occupied on this magnificent journey through northern Mongolia. 
It's a raw and awe-inspiring landscape of rolling hills, yurts, and herds of animals. Traditional singers entertain the Tsarangold guests, setting the mood for a true Mongolian experience. This unusual singing technique is one of many cultural traditions honored and kept alive here. Their national identity is important to the people who live here. This is the second largest landlocked country on earth, yet only three million people call it home. The train arrives in Ulaanbaatar. Our guests will spend the night in a local hotel. A typical Mongolian grill restaurant provides the evening meal. Preparing the dinner is a show in itself. It's obvious the young chefs enjoy the attention. It's called the Switzerland of Mongolia, the Terelge National Park, about a two-hour ride from Ulaanbaatar. It is a region of breathtaking beauty. Yaks and horses graze on verdant meadows, an exhilarating and memorable scene. Guests also have the opportunity to experience nomadic life up close, spending the night in real yurts. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Mongolia has reclaimed its Buddhist heritage, as shown clearly by this recently completed temple in the National Park. The Mongols have a long tradition as master horsemen and once used these skills to conquer much of Asia. That mastery is still on display today. This Nadam festival is a ritual competition, pitting the very best riders against one another. Passengers on the Trans-Siberian Railway have front row seats for this fascinating sporting spectacular. Mongols mount their first ponies almost as soon as they can walk. The traditional nadam consists of several disciplines, including wrestling. An authentic experience for the travelers and a perfect ending for our excursion through the Terelge National Park.
the journey continues. The Mongolian steppes slowly transform, becoming ever drier and barren. A desert. The Tsarangol travels through the famed Gobi Desert with its dunes and hardy vegetation. Our train stops at the Tsargan station in the midst of the desert. Time for a hike. A family has stopped here with its herd of camels. These are Bactrian camels with two humps, easily distinguishable from the one-humped dromedary. After a two-hour stop, the train is rolling again. A spectacular sunset as the travelers bid farewell to Mongolia. Just one more night separates them from their final destination, the Chinese capital, Beijing. The Great Wall of China, erected by Chinese emperors as protection against the nomadic hordes. Now, it is by far China's biggest tourist attraction. It is simply a must for every visitor to China. Beijing is one of the world's most dynamic cities, a melting pot of contrasts pitting unbridled capitalism against a communist regime. Three thousand years of Chinese culture paired with the fast-paced lifestyle of a global economic powerhouse. And of course there is Chinese cuisine. No visit to the capital is complete without a sampling of Peking duck. Prepared over a crackling wood fire, cut into thin slices and served wrapped in pancakes. This speciality dates back to the Ming dynasty. It's difficult to prepare and is only offered in the best restaurants. Our guests have traveled nearly 8,000 kilometers. It is without doubt one of the most multifaceted journeys they will ever experience. A stroll through a Beijing park gives our passengers time to reflect and review the events of the past few days. Powerful images of encounters and adventures. A treasure trove of memories to take back home. The dream of a lifetime fulfilled. A journey on the Trans-Siberian Railway. <laughs>